we're finally going to write the algorithm for binary exponentiation using assembly. What binary exponentiation does is it efficiently calculates x to the n. And this is a function that is used inside the MakerDAO stablecoin to calculate compound interest. I'll break this video into several parts. First, we'll handle the case when x is equal to 0, and then we'll handle the case when x is greater than 0. For the case x greater than 0, we'll split this into three parts. In the first part, we'll write the algorithm, and then in the next part, we'll put in some overflow checks, and in the last step, we'll put in some rounding error checks. Okay, let's start with the case when x is equal to 0. Here we have a function called r power, and this is a function that will calculate x raised to the n using binary exponentiation. This function takes in three inputs, x, n, and b. x is the x that you see over here, n is the n that you see over here, and b is the base. Here we're doing fixed point math. So let's say that b is equal to 100 and x is equal to 80. Then what x represents is 0 0.8. On the other hand, if x was equal to 120, then this would mean that x represents 1.2. So let's handle the case when x is equal to 0. So we're inside assembly, so we'll say switch x, and then there will be two cases, case 0, we'll do something, and later we'll handle the case when x is greater than 0, default. Now when x is equal to 0, we'll further break this down into two parts. We'll handle the case when n is equal to 0, and when n is greater than 0. When n is equal to 0, we're calculating x raised to the power of n, both are 0, so we're calculating 0 raised to the power of 0. In this case, we'll return a 1. The second case is when n is greater than 0. Again, we're calculating x raised to the power of n. And in this case, what we're calculating here is 0 raised to the power of n, where n is a positive number. And in this case, we'll return a 0. Okay, so let's write this in assembly. So inside here, we'll write a switch again. Switch n. The first case is when n is equal to 0. Case 0. In this case, we'll return 1. So the output is z, so to this variable z, we'll say z assigned to z. Now, we want to say 1, but remember again that here we're dealing with fixed point math, and 1 is represented as a base. So if the base is 100, here, instead of returning a 1, we'll need to return the base, 100, so we'll put b. Okay, how about the case when n is greater than 0? So this will be handled by default. In this case, we'll return a 0, so we'll set z equal to 0. Okay, so that handles the case of x equal to 0. Let's move on to the interesting part when x is greater than 0. Recall from the previous video about the algorithm for binary exponentiation that we initialize z equal to 1 or x depending on what n was. In particular, when n is an even number, we initialize z equal to 1, and when n is an odd number, we initialize z equal to x. For example, let's say that n is equal to 2, then we initialize z equal to 1. When n is equal to 3, we call from the algorithm graph that on the left side we did x multiplied by x, and on the right side we had a remainder of x. We multiply the left side and the right side to get x raised to the power 3. So this is how we're going to initialize z. The right side of the diagram that represented the algorithm. To handle this case, we will write a switch statement. Switch, and we want to check if n is even or not. To check whether n is even or not, we use the function mod n2. If n is an even number, mod n2 will return a 0. If n is an odd number, mod n2 will return a 1. When n is even, you'll say case 0 to z will assign 1. But remember again that here we're dealing with fixed point math, and 1 is represented as b. Else, default, we'll initialize z equal to x. Okay, so this completes the initialization of z. Okay, next, we're going to use the for loop to calculate x raised to the power of n. What we're going to do is initialize n equal to n divided by 2. We'll run the for loop while n is greater than 0. And after each iteration, we'll divide n by 2. So to do this, we'll write 4 initializing n equal to div n by 2. We'll run this loop while n is greater than 0, so say n. And then after each iteration, we'll divide n by 2. n is equal to div n by 2. Okay, and inside here, we'll write our algorithm that will calculate x raised to the power of n. 
Let's consider a simple example to see what the code inside here might look like. For example, let's say that n is equal to 2. In this case, n is even, so we initialize z equal to b. And what code would go inside here? n is equal to 2, we initialize n to be 2 divided by 2, which is equal to 1. 1 is greater than 0, so we're going to definitely run the for loop. And after the for loop, we'll divide 1 by 2, which will be equal to 0. So this loop will run once. Again, we want to return x raised to the power 2. So how will we do that? Well, on the first and the only iteration, if we multiply x, mol x by x, we'll get x raised to the power 2. Let's assign this to a variable. Let's say that xx is equal to. Now recall that we're doing fixed point math. So this xx multiply the base two times. So what we need to do is divide xx by the base. So I'll say the new x, x is equal to div xx by the base. Okay, so now this x represents x multiplied by x. And since over here it multiplied the base two times, by dividing by the base over here, here we will have x multiplied by itself, and then normalize to have the correct base. Now recall from the previous video that the last step of the algorithm was to combine x with z. And this is also the case when n is an odd number. So we'll say if mod n2, if n is an odd number, including the last iteration where n is equal to b1, we'll combine z and x. So say that z x equal to mol z with x. And like what we did over here, we'll need to normalize z x by dividing it by b. So we'll say z is equal to div z x by the base. Okay, so this completes the algorithm. Let's do a quick check when n is equal to 2. When n is equal to 2, n is initialized to be equal to 1, so we'll run the for loop once. Multiply x by itself, so we have x squared. Divide by b to normalize it. Now since n is equal to 1, mod n2 will return a 1. This means that this part of the code will execute. z is initialized to be b. And then we multiply this z by x. x currently is equal to x squared. So multiplying x squared by b, we get x squared multiplied by b. So here we have x squared multiplied by b. And on the next time we divide by b, to get z equal to x squared. And that completes the loop, and we return z equal to x squared. How about the case for when n is equal to 3? When n is equal to 3, let's consider this part of the code first. n is equal to 3, n is odd, so we initialize z equal to x. Okay, how about the for loop? Well, we initialize n equal to 3 divided by 2. 3 divided by 2, and then rounding down the decimals, we get n equal to 1. So we'll run the for loop only once. Multiply x by x, we get x squared, and then normalize it. n is equal to 1, so we'll run this code inside here. Inside here, z is initialized to be equal to x. So we're multiplying x by x squared. We'll get x raised to the power 3 with the extra base, so we normalize it by dividing by b. And the output z will be equal to x raised to the power 3. Okay, so this is the algorithm for binary exponentiation. The next thing that I'm going to do is put in some overflow checks. The condition to check for overflow when we're multiplying two numbers, we divide the product by one of the numbers, and if it is not equal to the other number, then that detects that overflow occurred. So let's write this part of the code first. Now here, since we're multiplying x by x, the check that we'll have to do is this. Let's write this part of the code first. So say div xx by x, and we want to check whether this is equal to x. If this is equal, it will return a 1. Otherwise, it will return a 0. So we want to check if it returns a 0. Is 0. And then we want to throw an error if this is true. If is 0, then revert 0, 0. Next, we also put in an overflow check after we multiply z by x. What I'm going to do is copy this code. And then paste it here. Okay, so the check that we need to do is check z multiplied by x and then divide by x. Is this equal to z? Now, there's also another check that we want to put in here. Since x can be equal to 0, we also want to make sure that x is not equal to 0. To check whether x is 0, we'll say is 0x. 
Now we want to check whether x is not equal to 0, so we'll negate this. Is 0. If x is equal to 0, then this part of the code will return a 1. So if you wanted to check whether x is not equal to 0, we'll negate the output of this by wrapping it in another is 0. Okay, so these are the two conditions. So I'll wrap this in a function called end. So what this condition is doing is checking x is not equal to 0 and g time x overflowed, then we'll throw an error. Okay, and that completes some parts of the overflow. Next, we'll put in some rounding. And when we do rounding, we'll also put in some extra overflow checks. First, we'll create a variable that will be used for rounding. So say let half is equal to div the base by 2. The first part that we'll put rounding is after we multiply x by x. So after we multiply x by x and then check whether it overflowed or not, we'll round xx by half. So say that xx round is equal to add to xx half. And then after we round it, we'll divide by the base. So what we're going to do is take this xx and then instead of dividing it by the base, we'll replace this xx with xx round. By adding a half to xx and then dividing it by the base, we get a more accurate x. This was discussed in one of the previous videos. Okay, so after we add half to xx, we also want to check that this number did not overflow. So we'll check for overflow when we're doing addition. When we're doing addition, we know that a number overflowed if the total is less than the parts. So we'll say if less than xx round, this is the total, parts will be xx. If xx round is less than xx, then we know that a overflow occurred, so we'll revert. Revert, 0, 0. Okay, the final step is to also add rounding after we multiply g by x and then round it by the base. So here, I'll say that gx round is equal to add to gx half. And then we're going to check for overflow again. So I'll copy this code and then paste it here. And we'll check that gx round, whether it is less than gx. And then instead of dividing by gx, we'll divide it by gx round. Again, by adding half to gx and then dividing by the base, this will be a more accurate number than simply dividing gx by b. Okay, so that completes the algorithm for binary exponentiation. Let's try compiling this contract. I'll hit Control S and the contract compiles. Okay, so let's deploy this contract and call the function. Deploy the contract and then let's call the function. Let's say that the base is 100 and we'll compute 2. So 2 when the base is 100 will be represented as 200. And let's say we want to compute 2 to the 4th. Call the function. And we get 1,600, which represents 16. 